things seem as appealing as not driving across Texas. So as you eventually approach the border, you become increasingly excited about the prospect of being done with that fucking state. And of course, it's only after you reach this long sought after boundary that you realize nothing changed and you just celebrated being in Arkansas. And it's with a similar <laughs> shade of disappointment that we rejoin the Book of Mormon, having finally escaped from the drudgery of Nephi, only to find ourselves in the drudgery of Jacob. What's that? Can we just like go to the airport metaphor and fly to another book? <laughs> <laughs> just do what we want. Noah stopped at Holy Book Security yelling at Moses. This doesn't even work. <laughs> <laughs> and of course... Also joining us in this exploration of the place where Joseph Smith's imagination is supposed to be is my lovely wife, Lucinda. Lucinda, welcome back. Thank you, thank you. I feel like we could all get out of this by pleading the eighth. <laughs> yeah, the eighth just amendment saying. is important. He's called you old before, and like, he was like, you're old. And I was like, what? Yeah. Don't say that about Lucinda. And he was like, I don't care, whatever. I do what I want. It was a whole thing. She listens oh, fuck to you the guys. episode, man. <laughs> Um, so All yeah, no, time. no Eighth Amendment pleading. Otherwise, Eli would end up doing god awful races with Heath or something. We, 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 just, we, yeah, we have to make fun of really white people instead. So, book of Jacob. Good. All right, fine, fine. <laughs> so we open up this book fifty five years after the Lehi clan left Jerusalem, with Jacob taking over the narrative with a sheepish. My brother also said I got to carve plates opening. Yeah, so. it really plays like little brother also had a tag. Like he, he said I could write all the stuff most precious to me, but he, he called all the Nephite history stuff, so I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> What's the deal with airline food, which will come to pass? I'm just covering uh, everything he did. Phrase. Jews and the Philistines aren't getting along. Have you heard about this? Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? <laughs> but seriously, folks, we need a shared state. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> But eventually it comes to pass that Nephi dies, and apparently he was holding the whole nation together with shoestring and chicken wire because he's gone 50 seconds before everybody's raping each other's ear holes and shit. Yeah, yeah, right. It all goes to hell quick. I love to, he starts to give all the clans names. Mm -hmm. He's like, there was the Jacobites, the Josephites, the Zoramites, but I'm I'm not keeping track of all that shit. Neither are you. Nephites are the good guys. Lamanites are the bad guys. Right. Moving on. <laughs> Like he's trying to explain Book of Mormon lore to you while you're in line to see the movie. It's like you don't have to read yeah, right. the comics. It just helps. <laughs> just helps. <laughs> also, apparently, desiring many wives and concubines is listed here as a wicked practice. Right. Jacob 115. It says so. Right wicked fucking awesome. Wicked <laughs> smart. This book is way more fun if everyone has like an over-the-top Boston accent. <laughs> I think it's more fun that way. True right. of everything except Boston, actually. We're, we're going to pack but, this and back And still submarine. hate black guys. <laughs> <laughs> but the key here is that Nephi died and everybody started being all sinful and puffed up except Jacob and like three other guys. Right. So in chapter two, Jacob sets out to do something about all this cavorting and lustfulness. Um, so he goes to the, I don't know, the national podium, I guess, <laughs> and, and addresses everyone. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and this chapter captures Mormonism better than anything else in the book so far because what we've got here is Jacob bothering people that would rather not listen to him and very impolitely explaining how much better than them he is. Mm -hmm. So after eight verses of apologizing, he lets loose and calls them a bunch of wound-enlarging, broken-hearted gold searchers. Yeah, and then he goes <laughs> hard commie. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody show the verse about using your wealth to help the poor to Mitt Romney. His, his poor heart can't take it. It's been a <laughs> rough year for old Rom Rom. <laughs> And God said, no starting companies with death squad money from El Salvador. And get rid of those binders and your face can't be a perfect rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> it feels personal. Can't get it right. Yeah, but, but for all the setup here, he has very little to condemn them with. I mean, like, he's eight chapters, he's laying out a downright Canadian preamble. But when he gets to the heart of the criticism, it isn't like, you know, those chipmunks are never going to fully recover from that, guys. It's how about you kick Frankie a couple bucks now and again? Here and there. Yeah, right. But but then in verse 22, he says, all right, enough about pride. Let's move on to dick stuff, shall we? <laughs> and based on what I learned from my first Utah Mormon friend, you should use that dick to impregnate a black woman. But huh. that can't be right. That's, huh. a, <laughs> that's, so, right. that's a rough joke first. for him. <laughs> <laughs> so first things first, God clarifies that David and Solomon grossed him the fuck out with all those wives. You may have said repeatedly in the Bible that he loved the hell out of those guys, but between us white guys, they were gross. Yeah, my friend definitely wasn't doing it right. Now he's got a Lamanite baby, probably herpes. <laughs> <laughs> Not from the black woman necessarily. I'm just saying like he- oh, No, he probably, that guy probably- She has herpes now, but yeah, from right, him. Yeah. 
Jeez. fair and balanced. <laughs> <laughs> well, and apparently Joey's playing a long con here because he doubles down in verse 27 of chapter two and says, in no uncertain terms, one wife, guys, yeah. one. one. Unless, unless, <laughs> as he says in verse 30, God needs a bunch of babies, which, mm. hey, conveniently is exactly what God is going to tell Joseph Smith. Spoiler alert. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and then just to make sure everyone knows Jacob means business, we close this chapter by saying that these guys are even worse than the Lamanites. Uh, there's there's a Wilt Chamberlain joke here. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a Neville Chamberlain joke, too. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Yep, yep, he's the there's Nazis a piece for like of ass years. in our time. <laughs> Now, just because that was the end of the chapter doesn't mean that was the end of the tirade. It, right, it would be like if the diatribe ended, the headline <laughs> thing came up, and I just started bitching about the same thing <laughs> some more. Oh, and another thing about those fucking evangelicals. <laughs> right. Yeah, so now we move on to the what's God gonna do to you portion of the program. And the answer is apparently make you a black person? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Yeah. Am I reading this right? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think so. And that's Mormon God for, I'm going to turn around this car right now. I'll make you black. I'll fucking <laughs> do one, two. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. So apparently the Nephites have gotten so bad that God's threatened to send in the B team. He's like, fuck, man, even a Lamanite wouldn't have fucked that. Oh, Jesus. Also, it comes really close <laughs> in verse five, just saying the Lamanites who you hate because they're black. The actual phrase is because of their filthiness and the cursing which hath come upon their skin. Yeah. Uh-huh. But and we should point out in this chapter, he calls them filthy several times. But yeah. to be fair, he doesn't draw any conclusions from how filthy they are. So, you know, <laughs> why are you afraid of science? Why are you afraid of science? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all of a sudden you're on board with phrenology. I get yelled at oh, every God. time. <laughs> gets brought up. Eli's fine, whatever. <laughs> Which amendment is that? <laughs> <laughs> Now, in, in case you missed the more subtle hints of racism here, Jacob worries aloud in verse eight that if the Nephites don't change their ways, quote, I fear that their skins will be whiter than yours. Right. The skins quote, of the, yeah, exactly. The skins <laughs> of the Lamanites. So basically this whole chapter is be careful or you're wind up black. Mm-hmm. And, and, and they still use this. But I mean, this is not the holy book of the ancient Akkadians no. or anything. This is the one they're walking around with now. Yeah. yeah. Well, now I'm embarrassed about embroidering. Be careful, you'll wind up black onto this pillow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. What if you just like add ER at the end? Be careful, you'll wind up blacker. Is that that? Now you're talking to a black person, so it's not offensive, right? Oh, God. <laughs> just saying, when you started talking about thing. adding ER at the end, I honestly thought it was going to be worse, so I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> He also wraps up by saying that he also warned the Nephites about fornication and lasciviousness and every kind of sin. And I'd love to see how that went. Every kind of no hand jobs, blow jobs, butt stuff. Apparently someday there's going to be something called a vibrator. That's out. Uh, No mixed fabrics, no eight legged grasshopper eating. Can somebody bring me food? This is going to be a while. No head on parking. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. Gross. He even described in perfect detail what a puzzle in a thunderstorm was. And and we found the plate, but you can't see it. It's (laughs) out. We found it. We dig it up. He'll take it back. Let's just say the prostitutes in Moscow told us to leave. (laughs) Wouldn't even tell us which bed Trump used. (laughs) (laughs) This book spends an awful lot of time promising us that it could have been better, too. Doesn't it? Well, well, not just that. We get a great little kicker. He says, these are the plates of Jacob made by the hand of Nephi, the guy who died in chapter one. (laughs) Yeah. What's the ancient Jewish version of squish, squish, squish? (laughs) (laughs) Um... Scrape, scrape, scrape. (laughs) (laughs) And you can tell people were still bitching about that last chapter, too, because this one starts with Jacob saying, so, yeah, about that last chapter, we have to carve all this shit into plates. I couldn't list all the sins. I'd be chipping away all fucking day. So, you know, moving on. (laughs) Should have gotten Noah. He spell checks. Sometimes he rewrites your jokes so they're funnier or not nonsense. It's great. I'm just saying it's great. Yeah. No, it's 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 great. great is also the word I was thinking. That's of. his sarcastic voice. I feel like there's a lost tablet somewhere that just says like TLDR, uh, Joe gets a harem, black people are gross, TTYL. You know? <laughs> well, there's also a little boy, those ways of God, so mysterious, am I right? Yeah, this is amazing. Okay, he gets so deep into talking about that that he almost talks himself into atheism, right? I mean, he's like, he's going like, I mean, it's almost like it makes no fucking sense, isn't it? That's, 
as an omnipotent creature, you could speak the world into in, in existence. That's so mysterious. <laughs> so weird. Just to crumple up the tablet and throw it away. He ends up having to etch a big strike through. <laughs> yeah. And just for like safe measure, he also tosses in a couple verses of these fucking Jews, right? Yeah. He says that they were stiff-necked. Isn't that like a good thing? Good posture. Like, like keep up a keep a stiff upper neck. Um, Isn't that it? A- that's not the expression. Nope. Oh, well then I would like to go to the hospital. I would like to <laughs> no, be- you're just saying this because chapter five is next and it's the worst <laughs> so goddamn long. chapter in the history of chapters. So long. Jesus. Uh, now, instead of just admitting that he's run out of shit to say, Jacob says, hey, do you guys remember that part of the Bible with the olive trees? That was awesome. Was it? <laughs> but but first, he again reminds us the tablets are a real bitch, guys. You gotta scrape them for fucking ever. I'm talking Heath and Wright levels of writing speed. You know what I'm saying? Just like a hurtful. hurtful. Not everyone writes like a tween stenographer on Adderall sending a text. <laughs> Whatever. Well, and also, okay, so after he bitches about how important shit has to be before you want to carve it into plates, he pisses away 77 verses. Uh rephrasing something that's already in the Bible. But I'll sum it up for you in 14 words. Mormons are like fresh branches off the rotting tree of Israel grafted onto America. There's your whole fucking analogy. We need a travel ban on Utah. (laughs) After the October show. Right. But because he doesn't get how analogy works, he has to go into weird, unrelated details. Yeah. You know, also the vineyard owner had a dog. His name was Rusty. It doesn't represent anything. (laughs) No. Right. And God saith he had one of those swingy fences, not not a gate. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> what is it? Uh, <laughs> and he uh, wasn't a pug because they can't breathe and that's unethical. <laughs> and they'll breed. And you I don't breathe, think I it you. would be possible <laughs> to express the tedium of this analogy without reading it to you, which we're not going to do. Don't worry. But suffice to say, it should have been over at least 11 times before it actually was. Right, right. We followed these grafted olive branches for nine fucking generations by the time this thing is over. <sighs> it's like an olive tree telling you about its ancestry.com results or something. Yeah. It's ridiculous. No, it, it goes on forever. So by the end of it, God's making the perfect olive tree in some Frankensteinian laboratory <laughs> of arboreal chimeras and I'm just going like Jesus how are there 17 more verses uh, this analogy goes on for so long that by the end of it the omnitemporal guy has died of old age yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say about this chapter it is best summed up by whoever writes the skeptics annotated book of Mormon when they say in their chapter summary quote this is the longest and most boring chapter in the most boring book ever written. The book of Mormon. <laughs> Amen. 31 times it came to pass that the trees were cumbered, grafted, pruned, plucked, <laughs> dunged, and digged for about no apparent purpose, except to waste 3,733 words. End quote. Shout Amen. out to friend of the show, Steve Wells. Man, yes. I'll tell you what, he's been doing this for a minute. Yeah. He's gone through some shit, guys. Steve <laughs> Wells has seen some shit. No doubt. <laughs> but it's been too long since we threatened everybody. Uh, so it's time to condemn some more folks to hell oh, by yeah. chapter six here. And is it me or does he make it pretty clear in this chapter that the Nephites need to believe in Jesus 500 years before he's born or they'll go to hell. <laughs> yep. I, yep. Free Jesus. It's all about fetal Jesus. They're, uh, they're called unborn again Christians. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, this occurred to me as we were reading this. Mormonism is to Judaism as Donald Trump is to CNN, huh? right? He fucking hates them and desperately vies for their approval at the same time. <laughs> also, pretty sure Donald Trump hates Jews. Huh? So... No. <laughs> After the way he treated that incredibly sweaty reporter, get out of here. I like the one who's Seriously, fucking my daughter. Jew. I like the one who's fucking my daughter. Respect. His dick wasn't in there. Mine certainly would. <laughs> oh, snap. Women voted for me. Burn. I'm president now. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of generic fire and brimstone talk, and, and then we're off to the final chapter of Jacob. Thank you, Jeebus. But not before he says, bye. I won't see you until we're all subject to God's Pleasing bar. Huh? What? A holy chapter that ends with by and phrasing in a single <laughs> sentence. <laughs> yeah, and it's the last chapter, so it's a perfect time to meet our villain. What? After yeah. Jacob says goodbye. 
Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and another fucking thing. Yeah, and, and that would that would be Sherem, the evil person who thought he was gonna tell Jacob what's what. Yeah, right. and, and you can see Joseph getting all pissed off at the articulate again here. He's like, and Sherem or Sherem or whatever his name is, I'm gonna go with Sherem. And Sherem used all them fancy smart words. You know who else uses fancy smart words? The devil. <gasps> <laughs> It says he had perfect knowledge. Anyone else picturing Jacob like a couple tables over at bar trivia? I'm telling you, Shareem, a little Shareem for me is working with the devil. There's no way you know Parker Posey's first film. James Randi turns on a radio scanner, picks up the devil. Hello, Shrem. Can you hear me? <laughs> you can't. You're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> right. So Shrem's using his gift of gab for the powers of darkness to try to lead people away from the teachings of pre-Christ. But then he gets around to Jacob, who is undoable, apparently. So they get in an Old Testament fight. Old Testament fight! Woo. And Jacob goes... You want a sign? I'll give you a fucking sign. And then ask God to smite Sherem mm -hmm. dead. And God's like, yeah, all right. Yeah, no, that's good. I can do that. Yeah, but God lets him live long enough to tell everybody he was definitely wrong about the Jesus thing. Right. Of course. Yeah. yeah, like the Canadian girlfriend Jacob totally got a blowing job from. The guy who doubted him <laughs> died saying the worst sin ever is doubting Jacob. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Subtle. Yeah. Blue. I mean, yellow. Still falling. Um, Mormonism's good. Judaism's stupid. Am, am I dead yet? Black people are gross. And smite you. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jacob ends his own narrative by dying. <laughs> he does. Just, yeah. I, I mean, he at least has a sense to say, and I'm sure I'm going to die before anything else significant to the overall plot happens. <laughs> the end. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry. Forget what I said before, because these plates literally end with... Adieu. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's right. A 6th century BCE North American is Israelite dies by saying adieu. adieu. <laughs> Fucking bon chance. We'll always have Paris. Fuck this book. <laughs> <laughs> and in closing, adieu, adieu to you and you and you. Please take this book seriously. <laughs> <laughs> well, right, and it's supposed to be hieroglyphs. So does the does the fucking Egyptian reform Egyptian say in brackets? Read this part in French. Hey. So anyway, this is the this book is the chronological equivalent of me doing an accent. But the good news is that it's over and we're done with that one. The bad news, of course, is that after the Arkansas of Jacob, we get the Tennessee of Enos, and there's no New York at the end of this road. So enjoy not reading the Book of Mormon while you can, and the Book of Morons will return in episode two twenty five. We have to. Heath called you old. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs>